Good evening! Tonight we'll be sharing stories with you that'll rot your brain and make you more controllable to us, and also have you asking yourself, are adults really running the world? Our top story tonight, Dr. Anthony Fauci has come out and said he will resign if President Trump returns to power. However, many on the left are surprised by Fauci's sudden new commitment to recruiting new votes for President Trump. And speaking of leaving the White House, Jen Paisecki, who has been acting as the White House's Minister of Lies, has given her last press conference as she will be leaving the White House to take a job with MSNBC. The network's talent department is optimistic that the country's least likable and least honest person will be a likable, trustworthy anchor that people will want to tune into. Odds makers have it that her upcoming stay at MSNBC could blow the duration of CNN Plus out of the water by several days. And the White House's new press secretary is Karen Jean-Pierre. She is the first black openly gay press secretary. Everyone around the world is relieved that the people who run the Biden administration have once again put their focus into accomplishing another powerful virtue signal, rather than putting their focus into running the country. You'll also be further relieved to hear that Brandon's new press secretary is in a domestic partnership with CNN anchor Susan Melvo. With CNN having a direct intimate relationship with the White House, and now the White House's own ginger devil infiltrating MSNBC, it would otherwise be a worrisome time trying to keep the optics from looking like the Biden administration is directly controlling the media as a propaganda arm. But luckily, with a disinformation governance board recently formed, we truly don't care about keeping up those optics anymore. In other news, due to supply chain issues and a baby formula factory being shut down since February due to contamination issues, there's a baby formula shortage happening in the US that's putting many infants in unfortunate danger. But luckily, the always coherent Brandon administration stepped in amidst the shortage and sent baby formula to the Mexico border so that US babies would have a better opportunity to not have any. And in very unrelated news, Bill Gates has made an investment in a company called Biomilk, which will soon be launching a breast milk alternative product. Right as conveniently, there is no competition for it. This just in! I wonder how that happened. Now, Bill Gates has said, it would be tragic if conspiracies about me were keeping people from getting... <laughs> well, we at the media that he helps control, oddly enough, couldn't agree more with him. There is nothing but baseless lies fueling absurd conspiracies around Bill. The reality is, right as True North 2021 points out, Bill Gates is amazing. He launches an artificial breast milk right as formula shortages hit America. He is the largest investor in things, and there's a pandemic. He is the largest owner of farmland in America, and there's a food crisis. Now, this is the true reality. And I think we can all agree that the conspiracy theories that point out these exact same things are all false. And as the midterm elections are coming up, candidate for Arizona governor Kerry Lake points out, the people who shut your businesses and killed your careers are now asking that you reelect them so they can keep their jobs. Never forget what they've done to you. That's right, so continue voting blue so we can get more of the same that only gets worse so we can continue building back better. This just in. In a real democracy, you have what's called election integrity. In a pretend democracy, you are not allowed to question election integrity which oddly enough would ensure election integrity would never get remedied if there was in fact infringement on it. Weird, I know, let's move on. Congressman Madison Cawthorn has proposed a bill that would require the CDC to include abortions in US death rates. But the CDC has pushed back, citing that for the past two years, it has not accurately reported death rates in any demographic. So why should babies be any different? Bernie Sanders looks like this, and Netflix has announced it'll be cracking down on woke employees in a company culture memo. The memo states, 
If you find it hard to support our content breadth, Netflix may not be the best place for you. The memo also let the Blue Hair employees know that they may be required to work on projects that they perceive to be harmful and that if they have a hard time accepting the work assignment, they might want to consider working somewhere else. After being pressured by the woke to adopt woke practices, which cost Netflix $50 billion in its market cap, it's hard to imagine why Netflix is reversing its practices. But rest assured, we'll be putting our top journalist on the story to find out why Netflix's decision is rooted in racism. And meanwhile, Kelvin Klein has gone as woke as you can get. I'm sure it'll work out well for them. They've gone from woman to obese woman to woman with beer gut and tits cut off while leaning against bed. And concluding tonight's bullshit we're feeding you, here is second in command, Madam Vice President Diversity giving one of her legendary orations. That is especially true when it comes to the climate crisis, which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on to galvanize global action. Now I'm not quite clear. Is she saying we're going to work as individuals? We will work together. Oh, together. But we're going to do what together? Work together. Oh, work together. Well, why didn't you just say so five times? And the beautiful thing about seeing her glance down at a piece of paper that she's reading off of, that means someone actually wrote this speech. And I suspect it was another one of the White House's hires that wasn't based on merit. This just in! White House hires first openly illiterate speechwriter. Well, congratulations to them for getting the job and for making Kamala Harris look as dumb as she is. That's it for tonight's news. We'll see if Fauci keeps on campaigning for Trump and how many hours MSNBC lasts once Paisecki brings her talents there. And if Billy G can continue to coincidentally profit off of human suffering. And in the meantime, we'll continue to work together to build back better in a worse way while telling you it's a much better way. We'll also censor everything to the contrary as we gear up to start throwing our political rivals in prison soon in order to save our democracy. Good night.